The Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus and the S21 Ultra have finally been revealed and I'll be sharing the details right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter by clicking the links in the description. So we've had so much news on the Galaxy S21 this week, I don't even know where to start. We've got the live reveal of the S21 Ultra and the S21 Plus, new accurate HD renders, we've got benchmarks, more confirmation of specs and some interesting news on the retail packaging. Before we get started though, please like the video if you're a fan of Samsung, let me know in the comments what country you're watching today's video from. So first story of the day and one that I told you guys in a previous video that was bound to happen, yep you guessed it, no charger or headphones in the Galaxy S21 packaging. Now even after Samsung only recently mocked Apple for this, it was always bound to happen. If one company gets away with it then the others are gonna follow and while they again claim it's for environmental reasons which may be partly true, it also saves a huge amount for Samsung. Now this isn't just a rumour either as it was discovered on a certificate of the Galaxy S21 for the Brazilian Ministry of Communications, but most likely it's going to be for everyone. We also had the Samsung Galaxy S21 benchmark leak this week for the standard Galaxy S21 using the Snapdragon 888 and this was on Geekbench 5. We got a single core score of 1075 and a multi core score of 2916 and this is for the standard S21 with 8 gigs of RAM. That's of course slightly less than the benchmark we had for the Galaxy S21 Plus which had a single core score of 1120 and a multi core score of 3300. 19. Now these are early benchmarks so scores will likely increase with optimization but it's given us a rough idea of the performance. Next up, before we take a look at the live reveal, we've got renders of the Galaxy S21 Plus and the S21 Ultra and these were actually based on live photos and look incredible. The renders come from Let's Go Digital and their source provided them with real photos of the Galaxy S21 Plus and the S21 Ultra but in order to protect that source, they created these 3D renders instead of sharing the actual photos. They provided plenty of different shots for both models and not only do they fall in line with everything we've had so far but they also match the live reveal we had later on. Overall though, these renders look incredible, they give us a good look at the size differences between each S21 model, they show us the camera module differences between each variant and they also show how incredible this new blade bezel looks with the significantly reduced chin. So shortly after that we had live photos leaked for the Galaxy S21 Plus and the S21 Ultra including confirmation of the camera specifications. The leak came from Sakitech who tweeted this live photo of the S21 Ultra and the Plus side by side. For a change it's also a great quality photo and not taken with a potato but of course some details are blurred near the bottom and this is just to protect the source. Along with these images he also confirmed the camera configurations on both devices and these are as follows. Follows. On the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus, we've got a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera at the top, a 12 megapixel main camera in the middle, a 64 megapixel telephoto at the bottom, and an LED flash in the top right just outside the module. On the Galaxy S21 Ultra, we've got a lot more going on with a 12 megapixel ultra wide in the top left corner. Below that, we've got the 108 megapixel main sensor, which is believed to be the HM3. Below that, we've got a 10 megapixel telephoto with 10 times optical zoom. In the top right, we've got the laser autofocus. Below that, we've got the LED flash. And then below that again, we have another 10 megapixel telephoto, but this time with three times optical zoom. These details were covered in a lot more detail on the tttechnology.co.uk blog, so check that out by clicking the link in the description and you can also go there to get the latest tech news as it happens. But overall, it's incredible news for the Samsung Galaxy S21 series. While we were promised minor improvements over the predecessor, I think we've actually got some major improvements that make for a much more refined smartphone. We already have the full specs and design details for all three models in the Galaxy S21 series, so we're going to run through them all now for those of you that are interested. For my regular viewers, you guys have probably seen this bit so just jump to the next video, but if you are new here then don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll get right into it.
So first up, we've got the Samsung Galaxy S21. This is the smallest in the range and of course the entry level model and it comes with a 6.2 inch dynamic AMOLED display with an expected resolution of 1440 by 3200 and this gives us 563 pixels per inch and it of course comes with an in-display fingerprint scanner. It's going to be a flat 120Hz LTPS display, so it's not going to be capable of 120Hz at Quad HD, but you can choose between them. We get a triple camera setup consisting of a 12 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 64 megapixel telephoto camera. It's powered up by the 5 nanometer Snapdragon 888 in North America and the Exynos 2100 globally, and it will be 5G compatible. We're expecting similar RAM and storage configurations to the predecessor, so roughly 8 gigs of RAM with 128 storage and expect micro SD support. It's powered by a 4000 milliamp hour battery with 25 watt fast charging support and unfortunately the standard Galaxy S21 is not going to have S Pen support. It's coming with 5G, Bluetooth 5.1 and Wi-Fi 6 and the color choices are going to be Phantom Violet, Phantom Pink, Phantom Grey and Phantom White. It will of course ship with One UI 3.1 based on Android 11 and a new report is stating we can expect to see the Galaxy S21 start from $850. Next up, we've got the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus. Now this is the middle of the range and comes with a 6.7 inch dynamic AMOLED display with an expected resolution of 1440 by 3200 and this gives us 563 pixels per inch and it of course comes with the in-display fingerprint scanner. Again, it's going to be a flat 120Hz LTPS panel so we can only have 120Hz at the Full HD Plus resolution or 60Hz at the Quad HD Plus. We get a triple camera setup consisting of a 12 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 64 megapixel telephoto. It's powered by the 5 nanometer Snapdragon 888 in North America and the Exynos 2100 globally and it will be 5G compatible. We're expecting similar RAM and storage configurations to the predecessor, so again 8 gigs of RAM with 128 storage and expect micro SD support. It's powered by a 4,800 milliamp hour battery with 25 watt fast charge support. Now, unfortunately, the Galaxy S21 Plus will reportedly not support the S Pen either. It comes with 5G, Bluetooth 5.1, and Wi Fi 6, and the color choices are going to be Phantom Silver, Phantom Black, Phantom Grey, or Phantom Violet, and it will, of course, ship with One UI 3.1 based on Android 11. Now, according to the latest leak, we can expect the Galaxy S21 Plus to start from $1,000. $1050, but personally I think this is a little bit optimistic. Finally, we've got the most premium model in the range and that's the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. The Galaxy S21 Ultra is coming with a 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED display with a resolution of 1440 by 3200 and this gives us 511 pixels per inch and it will of course have the in-display fingerprint scanner. It's a 120Hz adaptive LTPO display, meaning we can use 120Hz at the full Quad HD Plus resolution and the display will adapt its refresh rate from 1 to 120Hz to help with the power efficiency. We get a quad camera setup consisting of a 108 megapixel HM3 as the main sensor. We also get a 12 megapixel ultra wide and two 10 megapixel cameras for 3 times and 10 times optical zoom. It's powered by the 5 nanometer Snapdragon 888 in North America and the Exynos 2100 globally and it will of course be 5G compatible. We're expecting similar RAM and storage configurations to the predecessor, so 12 gigs of RAM with 128 gig storage and expect micro SD support. It's powered by a 5000 milliamp hour battery with rumors of a 65 watt fast charge and the best news is that the Galaxy S21 Ultra is finally going to support the S Pen although it will be sold separately. It's coming with 5G, Bluetooth 5.1, Wi-Fi 6 and the color choices are going to be Phantom Black or Phantom Silver. It will of course ship with One UI 3.1 based on Android 11 and the latest price leak reports that the Galaxy S21 Ultra will start from $1250. So overall, the Samsung Galaxy S21 range is looking incredible. While it's got minor refinements over the predecessor, they are still huge improvements and make for an incredible overall user experience. Of course, as more information comes in, I'll be sharing it with you guys straight away, but as always, I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. Who out there is excited for the Galaxy S21 and what do you think of these new photo leaks? But thanks for watching the video, if you liked it smash a thumbs up, if you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.